Hello everybody, welcome to Inside China Auto. Today we've got one of the most exciting cars of 2024. It is the fully electric Li Auto Mega. Yes, this is the Lee Auto Mega, probably one of the most distinctive cars that you will see come out in 2024. I mean, just look at it. It is like a bullet train for the road. Now, the eagle-eyed car fans of you will notice that it does look a little bit like a Hyundai Staria with this low rounded profile nose, very sort of sleek shape on it. But there are some unique differences on this car, pretty much more of them around the back. I'll talk about those when we get there. But this car is Lee Auto's first fully electric car. If you've watched our Lee Auto channels, you'll know that they do extended range electric vehicles rather than full battery electric vehicles. This car is changing all of that and it does boast some very impressive specs on paper. Today, we're going to put those to the test. But first, let me talk about the design. You will, of course, see that we have a very low profile front end on this. We've got, of course, Lee Auto's traditional LED light bar across the front. This sort of U-shaped panel around here is home to sensors and things like that. You've got your, your headlamps over there, more sensors down here. Also, vents that open and close for ventilation down at the bottom there. You'll also see we have a LiDAR unit on top of the screen. That is for Lee Auto's AD Max. That gives them autonomous driving capability downtown, on the highway, and in parking situations as well. We'll also try and show you some of those in today's video. But as I said, it is very unique and very aerodynamic. If, it, think, if you think it looks sleek, you are right. It has a drag coefficient of just 0.215 CD. And you can see that is because they've kept the furniture on the outside of this car very minimal indeed. You've only got your, your LiDAR up there, a little bit sticking out here, your wing mirrors, of course. These handles pop in when you're driving. So there's almost nothing sticking out on this car and it tapers off towards the back as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Helping that, you've got aero wheels here. They're only 18 inches. This is the only thing that you get, the only choice you get. You do get very hefty sidewalls on there to help give you the most comfortable ride. Lee Auto is, of course, a family car brand more than anything else. So they want for it to have a very good ride. They don't just rely on tires though. You do get con uh, continuous damping control and air suspension, dual chamber air suspension on this car as well. You get big doors here at the front. The only difference on these to the other Lee Auto cars is these don't have the soft close function because the packaging in here doesn't allow for that, I'm afraid. Of course, we do have a sliding door, MPV, seven seats, need a lot of space in here, loads of luxury. It's over 5.3 meters long, this car. It's really, really quite massive. And it's very massive inside, but I'll get to that in a minute. This point here is the highest point of the car. That is to give you the best ingress into this car. It's also quite low, especially compared to the other models. So you do get a really good amount of space in there. You can close that with a switch on there. We'll talk about the interior when we take this car for a charge because this car does boast some very impressive stats, especially when it comes to the charging, which happens down here at the charging port. We've got a really distinctive kick just up there on the, on the, on the, the side windows here. It's also got quite a low belt line actually much lower than most MPVs, which tend to have it a bit higher, especially the Alphard that this car is going up against. Also like the Denza D9, Zika 009, and of course the Voya Dreamer cars like that. But yeah, overall, a really distinctive profile. It's a bit Marmite, honestly. You're gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. I think in this color, it looks pretty good. I'd like it in black actually, but sadly they don't offer it in that. Anyway, let's have a look at the back and I'll show you how this car differs a little bit more from the Hyundai Staria. Now, coming towards the rear of the car, you can see it's got a very distinctive profile here because everything tapers off. The sides of the car start to taper in at the back, the roof tapers down so much so that my eyes are actually above this leading edge here, this little tiny spoiler, because what they've gone for is that kind of chopped off rear end because that gives you better aerodynamics, helps the car to cut through the air a lot faster and achieve that 0.215 drag coefficient. You've got yourself a full LED light bar across the back, not disturbed on this one because the door, the door panel itself is wide enough. This one lights up here blue so that you can show when your car is in autonomous driving mode, whether that's on the highway, urban roads, or even on parking as well. Inside, you'll see, once we've opened the trunk, the hinge is actually really quite far back along the back here. And that's because, well, first of all, to reduce the amount of space that that door opens, because it's already a long car, so it's going to be struggling a little bit in some indoor parking spaces. So it makes that 
the amount of space that it sticks out a little bit shorter. It also gives you more space underneath. You can see I'm a 5 foot 11 guy. I've got loads of space up here, no problem. And then you can fully access this trunk. Now, as it is, with the third row seats all the way up, we get 500 litres of space here. It's about 68 centimetres from the lip here to the back of those seats and 1.25 centimetres wide. If I do need some more space, I can press those two buttons there, and fold down the rear seats. They split 60-40, so you can do one side or the other if you really want to. What I should also say, by the way, is we do have a false floor here. So you can actually lift that out of the way. And with the false floor out and the seats up, you should be able to get four 28 inch suitcases stacked up in there and then two 20 inch suitcases on top which should be enough for a full family of seven but as i said if you need more space you've now got more space on top of that rear seat there electrically operated if i hold it down again you see those seats flip up a second time give you up to 1.5 meters of length there of space in the back which gives you around or above 1000 liters of space and storage in the back of this car it's really quite impressive and an extra bit here because of course we have the air suspension on this car press this button here you see the car starts to lower down so we get lower lip here easier to get things into the back of the car you simply press that to bring it back up again you get a 12v socket on the side here you do get your base subwoofer on there as well of course it is an electrically operated boot lid so you press this to bring it down that's it it's a very distinctive design it looks very interesting i mean i'm not i, I do like it i do like it i'm not 100 certain because it does feel like it's almost extra smooth a little bit too smooth but that's kind of the design principle for this car it's supposed to be smooth that's how you get those amazing aerodynamics which are by the way better than a porsche taycan and a tesla model 3 and they both look like pretty slick cars this is a big car it's got better aerodynamics than both of those but now i'm going to show you the party trick of this car which is the charging so check this out here's the charging port here's our lee auto 5c charger watch the charging port Look at that, opened automatically. Now I need a spare hand here, so hang that little cap on there. And let's plug it in. When I plug it in, I'm gonna start the charging. Charging has begun, I believe. So there we go. We're now on to two seconds. So there's the car. The charging will begin in just a moment. There you go, charging has begun. So during this 10 minutes, what I'm gonna do is check out the car. So we've got two cameras in here. We try and keep this consistent. You can see, there we go, we're on 8.67%. So if you are new to the auto, you will obviously want to know how luxurious this car is. You've got lovely soft materials on top of the dashboard, lovely Nappa leather on the steering wheel and on the doors, all lovely soft leathers all around here. See charging's already at 10%. And what time are we on on this phone? Let's have a look. Sorry, right, that's my child. 43 seconds so far. We've already gone up by about 4% in that time. You can see here, by the way, the charging going up to 653 amps so far. We should be able to get up to about 720 amps, I believe, or 740 amps on this during the process. Anyway, we've got basically 11 minutes to talk about the car. So let's do that. In front of us, we have the steering wheel, of course. And I'll switch now to the other camera, by the way, just to prove that we still have our timer going. There it is. Okay, so in here, what we have is Sorry, I'll just pop the window up. So in here, in the Leota, what we have is a twin 15.7 inch setup. Pretty much the same as you'll find in every other Leoto car. And if you want to check out more about that, you can check out other Leoto videos. I won't go into too much detail about the systems. The difference with this car today, the Leoto Mega, is that it comes with the Snapdragon 8295 processor. That means that it's an uh, upgrade on the previous Snapdragon 8155 processor that was in the previous Li Auto cars, and it runs super quick. I mean, because we've got our charging going on here, you can go into apps, you've got all your different stuff in there. I'm not gonna go into the details of that today because if you wanted to check out that, you can check out our Li Auto OTA 5.0 update video in the top corner, or you can check out our Li Auto L7 video up in the top corner as well. But again, you've got all your apps in here, lovely, great stuff. I said, it's very, very quick. And this car comes with a pretty impressive sound system, 21 speakers, 2,160 watts of sound. You also get 4D bass cushions in the back. So actually when you watch a film, you can watch something like Dune, which has those really sort of cinematic effects. You get Dolby Vision, Atmos thing. You can actually find that in the Ichi, in the Ichi app. You can specifically look for those movies in here. You can see when they're tagged on there and you can play those movies in the back of the car which you can watch on, of course, your third screen in the back of the Li Auto. You get that really sort of immersive cinema experience. And I can genuinely say 
it is brilliant. It's really, really good. But a normal Leoto interior, as I said, does consist of two 15.7 inch screens. You get twin wireless vented chargers down here as well. You do get a glove box on this side. And of course you get heating, ventilation and massage here in the front row of this car. This front queen seat, by the way, can recline and the leg rest can come up in sort of a queen seat mode, even with the glove box here and without having to go backwards to cut off the leg room to the people in the back. In terms of visibility, it's pretty good actually. We get really sort of wide A pillars here. I would say that it's better than the Zika 009 in terms of visibility, you get really wide angle here. A few interesting points here, you'll see we have a reverse, well, a rear view mirror. Actually, there's a button up here to change it to a normal rear view mirror. If you press the button on top, you can turn it into a digital screen so that it'll give you the feed from the camera on the rear end. Because of course, this is quite a long car. You can see all the way down the back there, 5.3 meters. Sometimes all the headrests, it gets a little bit less visible. That actually helps out quite a lot. Standard setup, as I said, though, it's really luxurious materials. Everything in a Leoto is soft. Napa leather seats. We've got a huge bit of storage space under the dashboard center console here. And we've got more space in the middle here. I'll just show you, by the way, that we have three minutes 55 on the clock at the moment. We have 37% there on the screen and some snacks in there. We've also got a refrigerator and a heater in here, which I'll show you when I get into the back seats. But the great thing about Leotos is they keep things, again, really simple. The interior is very, very familiar with normal Leoto designs. The same sort of gently rounded corners, simple geometric shapes. They don't overcomplicate anything. Everything feels very soft and luxurious. We've got our manual controls for the mirrors and manual controls for reach and rake here on the steering. Again, they like to do the things that are most important right in front of your eyes. Now, what I'm going to do is climb to the back of the car. And for that, I will switch back over to this camera and I'll show you, by the way, when we, once we do that. See, we have there 4 minutes 38 on the camera and 42% on there. We'll switch over to this one with 40, 4 minutes 44. And I'll climb to the back and talk about the back of the car. So here, in the rear seats of the car, and you see, by the way, with the charger open, the door has stopped a little bit to give us a... Oh, sorry, I need to go to a wide angle shot. The door has stopped to give us a, a sort of a more narrow angle. Now, check out these seats, okay? These seats are sort of 4D comfort. You get in here, heating, ventilation, and massage. The heating actually covers here, here, and even the leg rest as well. So you get full heating all down this seat. You get a 16 point massage, so 10 points in the top seat, six under your bum. Very good for a comfortable journey. They are actually more basic seats than in a Zika 009, for example. They don't overcomplicate things too much. You've got a wireless charger here with your ventilation there. You've got cup holders on the back of the center console in the front and ventilation controls here in the back. You can control your heating, ventilation, and massage seats here. You've also got your 60 watt charger if you want to plug in there. We've also got down here a fridge, which you can get in a lot of the auto cars, so you can actually make things cool, or you can make them hot. I believe it goes up to 50 degrees. Now, if you want to have those buttons on your seat, here they are. So if you have heating, currently we have ventilation on, hold that button down, changes to heating. This one turns on your massage. As I said, this footrest comes up here. The seat does recline quite a lot down towards the back there. So I'll actually pull both of these up so you can see what this chair looks like in fully recline mode. These seats actually move forwards and backwards by 50 centimeters as well. So they are really, really comfortable. Very, very nice seats here. And what I'm gonna do is take you into the back seat of the car to show you how much space we have in there as well. So that's our seat as it is normally. As you can see, plenty of leg room here. Let me just move this bag out of the way. And here we climb into the back of the car with the Mosquito. This is the leg room we've got here, right? Let me put my feet down there. Look at that, absolutely loads of knee room here and loads of space for my feet. And these kind of foot garages, as Porsche might call them, down there under the front seat. You also get pockets in the back as well. You get a USB-C socket in here. You get this option here to tilt your own backrest. So actually you can tilt the backrest on this seat. See like that? There you go. So you can tilt the backrest angle here. You can also put your heating on. And in this rear, and rear seat here, you get heating in the center piece as well. So as you can see, absolutely loads of room. They say there is five series levels of space in the back of this car and seven series levels of space uh, of, of leg room in the center, in the second row of this car. Of course, you get your ventilation as well. And this enormous panoramic roof. You get a mirror, a window here that is about one meter long. 
very much feels like you're in a high-speed train as you're driving along here because you've got a really large window. Actually, the window space on this car in total is 8.26 square meters all the way around, which is more than a Toyota Alphard and even more than a Mercedes-Benz V-Class, which is based on a van, so should have a lot of window space. This window does come with a blind as well, so that blind will slide back here. Another thing to point out in the back of this car, we do have, of course, the screen here in the back. I can't currently turn it on for you. I'm not sure how to make it come down, but that's a 17 inch screen now. So it's bigger than in the Leoto L series, the SUVs, so bigger screen in the back. And so these are really the seats where you're going to want to be. You do get these lovely plush pillows. They keep things very simple. You don't have that much on the seat, to be honest. You've got a little bit of space in the door here for cups and things like that. You get a little tiny bit of ambient lighting just under there and along the side here. But again, the difference between this one and say a Voya Dreamer, for example, is soft materials here. You've got Nappa leather. I'm not sure if it's Nappa leather on the doors, but it's certainly soft all the way along there. You've got soft lining around the sides here. So there's no harsh plastic surfaces. You've got carpet down there. You even do get Isofix mountings on the two rear seats, which is great. And you get a rear armrest in there as well. We do get, of course, our speakers in the back. What you also get, if you really want, is a plug down here. This plug works to plug in your PlayStation or your Nintendo Switch. You can actually plug in a PlayStation 5, play it on the screen that comes out from the roof here, and you've got your 3C, uh, your USB-C charger there. Now let's have a quick look in the front. We are currently on 71%. So let's get my phone out of my pocket. We'll check what time we're on. 9 minutes 28 seconds so far, we're up to 72%, that's 513 kilometers of range. We came in here at, I believe, about 9 point something percent. So we've added 63% in just 9 minutes. And you can see we're currently at 415 amps, 820 volts coming through there. Now, one thing that I'm not so sure about in the back of this car is the switch here to close. So if I close the door, you can see loads of legroom here, absolutely no problem at all there. We also get window blinds, by the way, on this second row seat, so you can close, lift those up. Your window switches all the way forwards here, so it's actually quite far away. You do have to lean forward to press that. You also have to lean forward to reach these cup holders in the middle. It would be nice, maybe, to have some cup holders here in the seat, but we don't have those at the moment. And only this seat here comes with a tray table that pops out like that. Of course, these controls here are to move this front seat further forward if you really want to. This is just a pocket down here, so it's not a leg, it's not a leg rest as it is on the Li Auto L7. But as you can see, loads of room in here. The other thing is the door switch. That's all the way up there, so that's not as easy to switch either, but it's fully electric. You can also do this from the screen over there in the cabin. So you'll see now we are at 77%. I believe we started at about seven, about eight. What percentage are we on, Ting? We are 9% before? It's, it's, it's done in like a couple of minutes, I think. So we're nearly done. So let's just check it out again. Where are we at? 11 minutes now. We've now got 563 kilometers of range on there. That's pretty impressive, I think. So yeah, that's the interior of the Lee Auto Mega. So now we're out on the road in the Lee Mega and we've chosen bit of a country road here so it's kind of a bit more bumpy it's made of those sort of concrete panels so it's a little bit more bumpy let's say in terms of the ride quality but we have just compared it to a Toyota Alpha which of course is a plus one million RMB car and I mean yeah overall the concept of the Alpha is more than eight years old now so compared to this it should be worse this car is significantly better it comes of course with that continuous damping control that dual chamber air suspension and the difference between the two is light years, to be completely honest with you. It is so much smoother, so much quieter, of course, because this is an electric car. The Alphard is a car with an engine. This car is considerably smoother and quieter. And we've got it in comfort mode at the moment. What I'm gonna do is switch it over into sport mode. What you'll find here is, even in sport mode, the handling does tighten up a little bit. It's still pretty soft. I mean, it's a family car. It's a big, you know, it's an MPV. It's not supposed to be a racing car. It's not a Renault Espace F1 or anything like that. But it does tighten up the, the, the handling ability, but at the same time, it's still really comfortable. It's still soaking up all these bumps. And what's basically happening here is cameras are reading the road and preparing the suspension in advance to give us the most comfortable ride quality that you can get. And like any Lee Auto, it is 
absolutely beautiful to drive. It's the same with the L series SUVs. The Mega is very much in the same vein as those. Really comfortable, really soft. So now we've got a few corners. So I'm gonna keep it in sport mode, just see if we can test out the steering a little bit. The steering, did try it out a little bit earlier. It is still soft. I wouldn't say it's, it's sharp, but again, you're not supposed to be racing this car. It's not gonna be a car where you're gonna be wanting to feel everything that's coming through. You're gonna be wanting to kind of enjoy it. Certainly up against the Alpha, the Alpha did have better steering feel, but you know, you're, you're chauffeuring people around. You're not taking them on, you know, laps of Silverstone, for example. And actually, the handling on these corners is still pretty good. I mean, we've got these 18 inch wheels, of course, with big chunky side, inch, uh, side profile tires. So it's about six centimeters. The side comfort the side wall on the tires so you're going to get a little bit more kind of roll you're going to get a bit more comfort overall i would say though definitely comfort geared not a sport sporty car as such until you put your foot down so this car will do zero to 62 miles per hour in 5.5 seconds we're currently doing about 60 kilometers per hour now if i thump my foot to the floor you get a real boost up the backside, and it's really really quite quick I mean, again, not quite as quick as a ZK009. That's probably a bit more explosive, a bit more aggressive. But it is what what tends to happen is if you accelerate from zero, you do it like a zero to 100 km per hour speed test. What you'll find is it comes in gently at the bottom, and then as that kind of Saab mid-range turbo, it actually starts to accelerate quicker after that point and becomes really quite thrilling. At that point, you really do start to feel like you're in a Chinese bullet train. The way that the speed of the the scenery outside starts to come past the window but as i said it comes in nice and gently and then ratchets up after about 20 to 30 kilometers per hour really starts to come on song and this car is pretty powerful I mean, it only comes in one version you get 400 kilowatts of power it's 155 on the front axle 245 kilowatts on the rear axle and that's 542 newton meters of torque so it's certainly plenty punchy enough and again Compared to all of your standard rivals, if you compare that to a, an Alphard or a Mercedes-Benz V-Class 260, or if you compare it even to the SUVs like a Mercedes, a BMW X7 or Mercedes-Benz GLS, it is more power than all of those. And quite honestly, there's plenty of it on tap. Actually, in reality, you could probably just have a 200 kilowatt motor on the rear axle and it would still be enough. I said that in the Galaxy E8 video, I don't think any car really needs more than 200 kilowatts of power, but, if you do want that extra bit of punch, if you want to glide through the, you know, the scenery or the motorway a little bit faster, this car will certainly help you do that. I'm going to try and slide past this Audi here, if he'll give us a bit of space on his left side. There we go. So, as I, as I said, when you need that mid-range punch, there it is, it comes all the way in. And we actually tested it on the highway earlier, so when Ting was driving, we had it on the highway doing about 120, 130 kilometers per hour. The ambient noise in the cabin was just 58 Newton meters, that's Newton, sorry, 58 decibels of sound. So it was really, really quiet. And again, those numbers compared to all the other rivals, even the prestigious Mercedes-Benz S-Class, this car in all three rows actually beats the S-Class. Uh, the S-Class Maybach version even, in terms of interior sound quality. You can have a completely decent conversation here. I've got two guys from the auto, got Ting in the third row there doing his thing as well. Ting, can you hear me back there? Yeah, it's See? quiet in the end. No problem at all. <laughs> okay, so now we're going slower. We're doing like 60 kilometers per hour here. But as I said, even at high speed, it's just, it's whisper quiet. You can even have a, you can even speak gently, really quietly, and people can still hear you all across the car, which of course makes for a really great experience. If your passengers choose to use this 17 inch screen here in the back, or even that 15.7 inch screen there in the front, and listen to that amazing sound system. As I, as I said earlier, 2,160 watts, 21 speakers, and especially in that second row, when you put on you know, a movie where you get all that really sort of atmospheric sound, you start to feel the, the shake, the 4D bass speakers in the rear seats really do make it like you're in a cinema. Yeah, okay, not a, it's not a 100 inch screen or anything like that, but it's incredibly immersive if you actually want to watch a film like that. It's also, apparently they have a certificate for the blue LED quality because blue LEDs, apparently, a lot harder to make than red and green LEDs. This one has the most blue, let's say. This screen, this screen here has 1,100 nits of brightness, which is really bright, and I believe a two million to one contrast ratio. So you get really good quality video on there. But as I said, in terms of the driving experience, 
it is everything that you would expect from a Leoto. It's comfortable, it's gentle. What I do like is that you get base cushion ex uh, adjustment on this, not extension, but you do get base cushion tilt angle on this, so you can get into a quite a comfortable position. I would like maybe a little bit more reach on the steering just because I like to have it a little bit closer, but I've got the seat on the lowest setting now. There's still plenty of leg room for everybody in the back down there, and I feel like I've, I've got a comfortable driving position here. The vis visibility is really good. Of course, we have this split A pillar here, as you would expect on MPV. If you compare this to a Zika 009, which has pretty terrible forward visibility in your front three quarters there, this is much better. I think these windows here on the side, the sort of quarter light windows, are significantly bigger. They feel brighter. <coughs> yes, the nose of the car is quite a bit lower than on the Zika 009, so you might find it a little bit harder to judge where the front of the car is, but with the 360 degree camera, you can easily see what's going on around the car. So you don't have to worry too much about whether your front end is gonna nudge. One thing I would say is this car, in terms of comparison to let's say the Xpeng X9, doesn't come with the rear wheel steer. And of course it is a big vehicle. It's over 5.3 meters long, which actually, by the way, if you compare that to a UK parking space is much bigger than a UK parking space because they're actually traditionally five meters. In the US, it would fit. In the UK, it's gonna be a little bit longer than that space, but it does mean that you get not the greatest turning circle in the world. I would say it's actually slightly worse than the Alfa. We tested it in the same junction with the Alfa. The Alfa almost made it. This had a little bit more to go to do that. So that's one place where the Xpeng X9, which admittedly is at a lower price bracket than this, would have an advantage. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's one compromise that you're making, I would say. In terms of what you get in terms of the interior, the space, the 5.3 meters is well worth it because back there, I mean, Ting's not the tallest guy in the world, but I've got plenty of room, right? I'm not there, I'm 572. There you go, 172. I got like a half leg room, and then the second row, you've got like maybe a leg room. Yeah, so basically all rows of the car have got massive amounts of leg room. I am massively impressed by that back row. I've never sat in the back of a, an MPV with such massive space. The Voyager Dreamer, which is, a little bit shorter than this, but was actually the second longest MPV in the world until this one came along. The third row in that is no comparison to this whatsoever. The fact that you have that space for your feet under the seats in front and loads of legroom. Not only that though, of course you get all the space in the trunk at the same time. So you can still fit a lot of suitcases in and seven people in the car at the same time. It's massively impressive in terms of space, as you would kind of hope, by the way, with that length of car, but it's, yeah, I mean, if you want to move, people are across the country, grace and comfort and silence. This is really an excellent way to do it. Now, in terms of range, we do get a battery on this, uh, only one choice. Again, it's 102.7 kilowatt hour battery. That'll give us 710 kilometers of range. And of course, I've already demonstrated the charging. You can charge more than 500 kilometers in less than 12 minutes. So imagine if you're going on a long trip, for example, and you need to stop on the motorway a few times. Of course, if you've got a family, you've got kids, they need to stop at the bathroom every five minutes usually. If you want to do that, you know, you can charge for three or four or five minutes. You can add another 200 kilometers of range in that time. That is gonna be game changing, especially once Lee Auto's charging situation comes on track because they're gonna have, they're gonna have 2,000 of those 5C chargers across China by the end of this year and 5,000 by the end of next year. Now, of course, one of the big key things about Leoto, as we showed in our Leoto 5.0 OTA video, is the new urban NOA and the highway NOA that they can have, actually do. So, because we are in Sanya, not a small city like we were in that video, we actually have the opportunity to turn it on. So, of course, you turn it on by tapping down here. And you can see now on the screen, we've got our blue line. You can actually change this screen to the main one so you can see what's going on over there. And we can test it out in real time. So this is kind of an urban setting. We've got a lot of buildings and hotels around here in Sanya and a lot of other vehicles around at the same time. So we'll give it a quick go and show you what it's like. So what we've got coming up now in the lane in front of us is a car that's parked up and a scooter to negotiate at the same time. We should be okay in our rear corner. Car's pulling out, it's navigated that really nicely. So I just have to keep my fingers near the wheel because it's got a capacitive touch on it. I'm going to drift back into the lane that we were in. Got another car now. That's an obstacle there. It's spotted that. It's happy. It's driven around it, left it loads of space. That's cool. Now we've got a temporary traffic light even. So a little traffic light in the middle here. It's going to get a bit tighter because it's two lanes and it's going down to one kind of. 
traffic light is still going. We just annoyed that Chevrolet, that Chrysler behind us there. But we navigated that pretty good, I would say. And again, we've got more obstructions here. Another car parked in our road, a guy getting into his car and a car coming the other way. How's it going to deal with this? Again, real comfort. That was actually a very impressive scooter over there. Now, what I will say is, when we were driving with Ting in the car, in Sanyu, you get a lot of people who are really quite comfortable with life. They'll just drift out into the road, whether they're walking or on three-wheel scooters or even four-wheel scooters. What I would say is, it gets close sometimes. It gets a little bit scary, but you never actually have an accident. If you just leave it to do its thing, you don't have those accidents. It just feels a little bit scary at the same time. But that is kind of, that is the, that's the combination there between, that's the combination between humans and AI. And that's currently where I see the friction in those two things, because AI can't always predict what humans are going to do. They are pretty interesting people. So NOA has now finished, so we now have to take control of the car. So that was a, that was a good little test though, that urban road then. I quite enjoyed that. And the car did really well. Actually better than it did in the hometown that I was in the, uh, for the OTA 5.0 video. So really nice there. Overall, really great driving experience. I like it a lot. So that's it for our review of the Lee Auto Mega, a fantastic first fully electric car from the brand. And that charging speed is really quite incredible. It'd be interesting to see if anybody can match that in 2024. It could well be a game changer. It's everything that you would expect from a Lee Auto. It's plush, it's refined, it's absolutely packed full of kit, autonomous drive systems, dual chamber air suspension, brilliant surround sound. Overall, an excellent package. If it's priced right, it should do pretty well. It's an MPV, so it's going to be interesting to see exactly how many sales it adds to the brand. But as a statement piece for a first fully electric car, it could not have gone better, I don't think, for Lee Auto. If you've enjoyed this video, do please consider giving it a thumbs up. It does help to get the channel out to more people. Thank you very much for watching. And if you do, thank you for subscribing. We'll catch you next time.